Jesus. The, the first sacrifice of the blood was done in Genesis 3, verse 21. Genesis 3, 21 says, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God made coats of skin and clothe them. Remember when they sinned, they tried to cover themselves with fig leaf, right? And God saw it. God said, no brother, I ain't going to work. I have a, a, a remedy for, for an atonement for sin. And God killed the first animal and he clothed them with that animal skin. That animal was filled with blood. You see, God made the first sacrifice upon the face of the earth. To, to, to wash, not to wash the way of atonement for the sin. Covering of the flesh, the sin of the flesh. The flesh of the sin. Either way, you see. Now I want to show you, go to Exodus 24. Verse 5. Now the blood is anointed. Let me tell you something. The blood is anointing. That's why whenever you plead the blood of Jesus, the enemy has to go. Because the power of the Holy Ghost is in the blood. You see? As believers, we should be we should be confessing the blood in everything we do. Don't only say in the name of Jesus. But there's an extension to completing that statement. You say in the name of Jesus through the blood. In the name of Jesus through the blood. You see, when you say the blood, the enemy, it catches the enemy attention. That you know about the blood. That you're part of that remnant of the blood. You see, the blood catches its attention. In fact, the Bible says when the blood is mentioned, the whole heaven catches the attention of that person that mentions the blood. You don't know how powerful the blood is. The blood, one drop of blood is more powerful than all the demons in hell. One drop of blood. All the angels in heaven. One drop of blood. It's so much powerful. And today, we have the blood dripping through our hands and we don't know it. If we don't know the power of the blood, we can just be, we can just be throwing blood all over. Nothing happens. Everything you touch, when the Bible says you're blessed with our hands, and I'll show you the job just now, you're blessed with your hands, which means that everything you touch, when you touch it, the life of the blood goes into that. But you have to know what the blood has done. Not only your, your imagination, but you have to know that when you touch, it's going to happen. Like when Jesus spoke to the fig tree and said, you shall not be on a fig anymore, he didn't have to, the disciples next morning was excited, or they would say, Master, come and see what's happening. Jesus didn't have time. He knew by the time he spoke, he's going to be dead. So he goes his way. When you apply the blood, you must know what's going to happen. Amen? Let me show you some wonderful things in Exodus 24. Precious Jesus. And he said, Exodus 24, verse 5, And he said, Young men of the children of Israel, which offer burnt offering and sacrifice feast offering of oxen unto the Lord. Remember, the sacrifice is of blood. In the Old Testament, everything was about sacrifices of the blood. You see? Because it represents the blood of Jesus. It cleanses us. It was the first tabernacle. You see? Jesus brought in the second tabernacle, right? Of offering, of burnt offering and sacrifice, peace offering of oxen unto the Lord. The next verse. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. So you can imagine how blood it was. Put half in the basin and he sprinkled half upon the altar. Blood was it in the Old Testament, you know. Sacrifices was it in the Old Testament. It's the way that, it was the way that you, you communicate with God and holiness. Sacrifices, you see. You commit a sin, go kill a turtle dove. You do something, kill an animal. I believe long time everybody was farmers. <laughs> they had to have animals, you see. Because they had to be killing men. They were meat eaters, brother. <laughs> I, I suppose that 
they sin just to eat. <laughs> you see? And he says here, now the blood was shed. And Moses took half the blood from the basin, the other half is sprinkled on the altar. The next verse. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And he said, all that the Lord had said, we will do and be obedient. So he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. The next verse. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. Wow. When I read it, I still can't imagine how Moses did that. He took the blood of animals. How many animals do you think died? And sprinkled on the people. It was, re it was a requirement by God. Today God requires so much of us and we just don't forget, we forget it. Do you know why? Because everything is grace. Everything is grace. God, you know, we sing, thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we do that. Thank you for your grace, Lord. You know what this grace thing? Make me want to sin now because God's grace is available. In the Old Testament, you have to be so into, into, you have to be so straight because every time, every time you sin and you kill an animal, if your father is a farmer, the prophet goes. You see? You have to be so straight in the Old Testament. And he says here, And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you, considering all these words. The next verse. Then went up Moses and Aaron, and Nada, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. The next verse. Oh, I love this. Now remember, when Moses went up to Mount Sinai, and the Lord tell him, go down. You read, you read when you go. The Lord tell him, go down. Next, so the people come to the mountain and they're struck down. You see? So here now, Moses, God told Moses to take, take the elders up now. And Moses carried some of those folks and he's taken them up to the Lord, the Bible says. And they saw God of Israel and they were under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. Now remember now, before they ever saw God, the blood had to be shed. You see? So when the blood was shed, the blood gave them access to the presence of God. Now you should be jumping off your seat by now. If you want to come to the presence of God, it wouldn't take one hour of worship or two hours of preaching or anything of such. You just say, Father, I come into your presence through the blood of Jesus. And I tell you, you're right before the throne of God. You're right before His presence. God has made it so easy for us in this time of grace. You understand what I'm saying? So because the blood was shed now, they were able, they saw the God of Israel. Their eyes were open and they got access to His presence. They saw the invisible God in a visible form. They saw the, the invisible God visible. They saw the invisible God because the eyes were open and it was because of the blood of Jesus. You see, and the Bible says, and they were under his feet as it were a paved book of sapphire stone and it was the body of heaven as in his clearness. The next verse, see what happened? The next verse. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. In other words, when God, when Moses took them up, God didn't put judgment upon them because the blood was shed. You see? So they had access to his presence. They had access to the to the way God was among Sinai. You see? And the Bible says, also they saw God and did eat and drink. Because of the blood. 